It's 30th of May, 2017, right? 30th of May, the day. And uh, three days later, on Friday, on 2nd June, uh, it counts as uh, the second anniversary of my Toastmasters journey. And, uh, but on Friday, we don't have a meeting. So I realized that since I got this opportunity to give a speech, why not talk about my Toastmasters journey? Mm -hmm. So today I will talk about my Toastmasters journey and the lessons that I have learned during these two years in this club. So on 2nd of June 2015, it was a beautiful summer evening like it is today. It was a blessed day for me in fact. And uh, we came here we came, I, I came with my friend Mohammed Ali. So we came here earlier, like an hour before the meeting. We were and, the first. Yeah, yeah, we were the first in the hall, and there was no one. So it was two years before, so I was 20 at that time, so I was not here. I was more not here. I came and I was starting playing with the coffee table there, and I spilled the coffee beans on the table because of my nauseousness. But obviously, before anyone came, I just you know, fixed it. And after a few minutes, a very nice gentleman came in the hall. He goes, Salam Allah, guys. You know what I'm talking about? Mr. <laughs> Dahan <laughs> came. And it was the warmth and energy of that gentleman that made me fall in love with this club. I mean the oh. way he <laughs> the way the way he greeted me, and it's not only me. I mean many people I came across, many people I talked to. They told me that the biggest influence they had in this club was the way they were greeted on on the very first meeting. The the, the way they were welcomed. It had a big influence on them or or on their decision to join Ankara Toastmasters. So that was the first day in uh, Ankara Toastmaster and I learned my very first lesson. And the lesson I learned was that wouldn't it be great to greet or welcome someone the way you were greeted? I mean like when during the break everyone was talking to each other, the people they already knew and you were feeling a little awkward, a loner kind of, and some guy came and strike a conversation with you and made you feel better. Wouldn't it be great to do it by ourselves, you know? When, so I promised myself that when, once I become a member, I'll, I'll be that guy who goes and greets people and uh, strike conversation during breaks to guests and new people. So that was the first lesson, lesson number one. Keep, like, keep taking notes of these lessons. Now my journey in public speaking didn't start with Ankara Toastmasters. Uh, I was, you know, very much active in my high school and primary school, doing debates and participating in speech competitions. So I was very much active. I came here and I was like, oh my god, I am going to be the king here. I was like, oh, what's this? <laughs> These people will learn from me. So, you know, I was like, okay. So, and two or three weeks later, I was supposed to deliver my icebreaker. And I delivered my icebreaker. Guess how did it go? Yeah, it went well. <laughs> it went wonderful. I was everyone congratulated me. I won that day, and all the senior members came and paid me compliments, and uh, they were like, "Sam, it's really nice speech. You're a really nice speaker." And it was really flattering for me and very encouraging also. But what it did to me, it made me overconfident. Now, confidence is really important in public speaking. But being overconfident can kill you in public speaking. If you're overconfident, you lose your track. And that's what happened with me. So flash forward to 22nd September 2015, my second speech from CC member. And Dahan Bey kicked my ass. <laughs> he woke me up from the dream and showed me the reality. Uh, and I lost that day the best speaker certificate to him. But I didn't learn my lesson that day. My, in my fourth speech, I lost it to Doris. <laughs> in, 
my fifth speech, I lost it to Aksa, my sister. In my sixth speech, I lost it again to the hundred. <laughs> Four consecutive uh, defeats. And then I learned my lesson. And the lesson I learned was that yes, you can be confident on your talent, uh, on the finesse you have for a speech, but you should never be overconfident. <laughs> You should, not, you should not be overconfident in anything, in any aspect of your life, be it public speaking. So, for, uh, the success of my first speech affected the defeats, the four next defeats, and I learned my lesson. And from that day onwards, I never feel overconfident. I prepare for my speech, uh, I rehearse it before coming, and it had a good effect on me. It made me a better person as well in my life. It made me more humble, more grounded, and value the things that I have. That was the second lesson I learned. Now, flash forward to 16th of April, 2016, the first public speaking national contest in Turkey that was held in Istanbul. And I was one of the contestants there. And to be honest with you, my friends, I worked really hard for that contest. You know, each and every word, I memorized it, precise and calculated. I knew what it meant to me, those words, and what are they gonna mean to the audience listening to that speech. But, you know, let me tell you a fun fact. This stage here, it's nice. I like it. I'm used to it. The people listening to me, I know you guys. I like you guys, so I'm comforting. But it's not the case there. Unknown stage, unknown people. I was really nervous. I was sweating bullets. Anyways, I gave my speech the best I could. I didn't, but uh, our club was really successful. Uh, we got the second and third place. Even though I didn't win, but I was feeling extremely happy. It was the first time in my life, the kind of person I am, I'm very ambitious, you know, every defeat just nails me in my body and I feel devastated after the defeat. But at that day, I felt extremely happy. And that day, uh, hence I learned my third lesson of life from this journey of Toastmasters, that it's not sometimes winning or losing that matters. It's the experience you gain from some things. And I gained a wonderful experience there in that national contest. I listened to wonderful speeches from wonderful speakers all across Turkey. And I realized that how little I knew. I mean, like, you know, I'm nothing. I mean, I have to learn a lot of things. I have a long way ahead of me. I have to learn a lot of things and I have to improve. That was a very important lesson I learned from there. And I came back. Now the fourth lesson for that, let's go back to summer vacations of last year. And we went back to Pakistan. And though I was near my family, I was with them, I missed the family here. I missed you guys, my Toastmasters family. And every Tuesday evening, I would feel really bad and depressed. I'm like, oh my god. It's like, why can't I be with them? And public speaking, which is my passion, I didn't miss it at all. And hence I realized that it's not public speaking. It's something more than this. So Ankara Toastmasters is not a club for me that teaches public speaking or that makes me a better leader. It's much more than that, because I met the greatest friends here, which I will never have again in life, and the greatest memories I ever made, also. So the lesson I learned here is sometimes, no matter how many certificates you get, no, ma no matter how successful you become, you can get the highest Toastmaster Award there is, that is Distinguished Toastmaster. But if you do not have your friends with you, that means nothing, you will miss them. And the memories that you create with your friends, you will cherish them 
in years coming after that. You know, 10 years, 20 years. If the Toastmasters experience will last maybe 5 or 6 years. But those friendships and the memories you create together, they are eternal. They'll never last. So that, that was a really important lesson I learned from them. And the fifth lesson, it's when I nominated myself to become the president of this club last year. No, yeah, this year, 2017. Yeah, 2016. 20th or 20th December 2016. But yeah, my presidency year is 2017. So, and that was a really important thing for me because me myself, I have never seen myself uh, as a personality uh, to lead. I never thought of myself of a leader, and I had to realize that. Uncle Toastmaster is not just a public speaking club, it's also uh, important for leadership and I have to learn this. I have to learn that what goes on during a meeting and what goes uh, behind the scenes for that meeting. And that, that was really important lessons I learned and I'm still learning, you know. When something goes wrong during a meeting, I feel the anguish, you know, I feel the pain in my heart. Uh, I, I feel like, you know, it's something I did wrong. I take responsibility for anything going wrong in meeting. So I will also uh, suggest you, all of you, that in near future, whenever you get the opportunity to serve something that has been serving you, accept it with graciousness and do whatever you can do for it. So that was a really important lesson. And then the last lesson before I finish my speech, I still have a long time to go, I guess. <laughs> and there was this year's contest. Do you remember? Some of you were there, right? Many of you were there. 7th February 2017. Five of us contested uh, in the internal contest. And uh, two were supposed to be selected to go to Istanbul. And Arda and Aksa. <laughs> And the very important lesson I learned was that no matter how many speeches you gave, no matter how experienced you are, no matter if you are the president of the club, <laughs> if you do not prepare for your speech, if you do not work hard, you lose. I mean, it, 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 I mean it's different from being confident or overconfident. You can be humble and still be unprepared, right? These are two different things. So I was unprepared. I didn't prepare my speech well. And I didn't win. And I accepted it with a big lesson that from now on I will prepare very well for my speech. In fact, I was really happy for the people who were selected. Arda and Aksa, they showed amazing performance in the national contest and brought flying colors for our club. I was really happy for them. And I went there and it was a wonderful experience for me. So guys, now you. The time comes to you. I want to ask you that since you are here in this club, Ankara Toastmasters, in Ankara, Ankara with a population of 5 million and thousands of people speak perfect English, yet you 30, 40 people, 50 people are lucky enough to have found this club, right? Isn't it a blessing? Isn't it a luck? I mean, I was here for one year before coming here and there was nothing to do in my life, seriously. And when I came to this club, when I came to this club, I found a new direction, I found a new passion. It made my life better, exciting, and met such great people. So you are the lucky ones here, right? You are the lucky ones among five million people to have found such great opportunity in the city of Ankara. Won't you think that it's the time to own this, to give a favor back to the club? Right? Because today I am here. Tomorrow I might not be here. And some people will come from that door, some new members, some guests who are unaware of the concept of those masters. And you will be there to welcome them. You will be there 
to influence them. You'll be there to inspire them. You'll be their leader. You'll be their mentor. You'll be their motivator. And that's, that is the most important lesson we learn uh, in this club. It is to live and to do something that is really beneficial for others rather than ourselves.